everyone. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel, The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. My name is Nick Barksdale, and today I wanted to briefly discuss something I actually hadn't known that I stumbled on today while reading Cambridge Ancient History Part 1, Volume 1. Um, basically, we're all familiar with ancient Egyptian. When you think of ancient Egyptian, you commonly think of hieroglyphs, something you see constantly throughout archaeology and Egyptology. Um, you see it on their walls, um, on the pyramids, stuff like that. So, I mean, it's the one thing everybody thinks of when you think of any ancient Egyptians, you know, the symbols, the bird, water, all of that. Um, but basically, there are actually four, um, pardon me, there's actually five different written forms of ancient Egyptian. And I wanted to briefly go over that because I, I had no idea and I thought that was awesome when I found out. Um, so basically, I took notes because I have the memory span of a fly. But number one, Old Egyptian is going to be hieroglyphic text. Now, all of these dates are going to be before Common Era, so BCE. The hieroglyphic text was usually from around 3100 to 2160. Then it jumped to what was called Middle Egyptian, which is going to be a standard literary form. It's basically cursive, the cursive form of Egyptian hieroglyphics, which was about 2160 to 1780. And then it transformed into late Egyptian, which it was used in heretic script and everyday usage. And it differs from Middle Egyptian basically because of its incorporation of uh, new features from the spoken language of the time. Uh, certain terminal terminology changes and stuff like that. But then it developed into demotic. Demotic was around 1000 BCE. And it's distinct in not only grammar and script, but also orthography. And of course, finally, number five, and the one that actually interests me the most, is Coptic. It's the last form, the last written form in a modified Greek alphabet. And what's interesting is it was primarily used by Christian Egyptians during that time, and it actually is still in use today, especially in some of the churches, like in Cairo, for example. Bob Breyer, in a lecture series on ancient Egypt, which he's great. I, I love his stuff. If you haven't seen or listened to any of his stuff or read his books, do it. Um, but anyway, he says whenever he's in Cairo, he likes to stop by one of those churches because when you hear the language and when you see it written, you're still looking and hearing a slightly different version of ancient Egyptian. And I mean, that's, that's awesome. I would love to experience that myself. Um, that's really it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I learned this today from the Cambridge Ancient History, which is a 14 volume set. Um, I highly recommend it if you can ever find the time to read them, do it. It's great. Uh, huge scholars and historians of the day at the time, like J.B. Burry, they did a lot of it. Um, but anyway, that's something I hadn't actually known. And I thought it was very, very interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Um, if you like these videos and if you like uh, what I'm about, what I want to do, feel free to like and subscribe and follow me on YouTube. Um, basically, we're going to be doing a ton of professional documentaries from different groups, uploading them onto our channel. But we're also going to do a ton of historical commentaries on the ancient and Middle Ages. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you so much and have a great day.